Cody, um, I want to get your thoughts on the other Bantamweight bout between Aljamain and Cody, and if you have a prediction, I'd love to hear it. Uh, yeah, I really, I really don't care about the other Bantamweights, you know, just focus on my fight, you know, made the best name winning those fights, and uh, look forward to, uh, you know, future matchups with them in, in the future, and, and see how this uh, Bantamweight division uh, unfolds after this weekend, and uh, going from there. Cool, thank you. We will take the next question from Caroline Pierce with BT Sport. Cody, Caroline Pierce here. It's been a while. Love the beard. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great. Yeah, the quarantine beard. <laughs> I like it a lot. Look, it's been a tough time for you. The time off, the injuries, hospitalization that you talked about, as well as obviously the losses. Talk to us about what's been the biggest challenge for you during this time. Um, you know, I think that you know, the life is throwing a lot of challenges, you know, inside a career, outside of the career life itself. Uh, for me, it wasn't really a challenge. It was just uh, about staying motivated, staying driven, you know, knowing that um, life is a marathon, not a sprint, you know, just constantly reminding myself, you know, you go through these hardships in your life, these, these um, you know, hard roads you have to battle up. But I knew that, you know, losing the title was going to be um, a hard thing to do, but to regain it was even going to be harder. So I had to just basically, you know, Physically, mentally, build, build myself up for uh, what I was able to do. You know what was able to need to be done to reclaim that title. And I feel like I battled my demons, correct a lot of my you know errors, mistakes, things that I needed to do. Um, you know, got out of my comfort zone, went to New Jersey. You know, you know, time away from you know my comfort zone and uh, my family, my, everything that I've known. So I went you know coast to coast, and uh, you know I think this is going to be a huge. Um, huge you know payoff uh our coming Saturday night well talk to us about that moving well not moving but splitting your time between team alpha male mark henry ricardo almeida what have they added to your arsenal you know what where do you feel that you've grown in that time with that additional work and that change of scenery that you've had i feel like they you know my coaches from team alpha male, my coach from new jersey uh, ricardo almeida uh, you know coach henry they've added a lot you know just with the coaches and team alpha they've all blended everything together and just you know, always constantly um, each camp is just reminding me to be myself you know do what I am best at is you know be a fighter be an athlete and um, you know just just remind myself of, to have fun you know fall in love again with the sport uh, to have that passion that fire and I think that's a difference uh, from this fight camp um, to the last fight camps going in leading up to the fight that I'm, I'm hungry again I'm, uh, my passion burns everything that's ever have. And uh, just, just very thankful that that, that fire is back. You know, it's uh, it sucks to lose it. You know, I, I love fighting so much that I hated that time. Every time that I try to walk away from fighting, I feel like I was always drawn back. And you know, this is my true purpose in life is to be a fighter and use these God-given skills that I was blessed with to provide for my family, to make a better life for myself, to you know become the best in the world. And uh, you know, just just putting the hard work in and the, and the daily grind is uh, going to be. Uh, payoff uh, come Saturday. Really can't wait to see that. You must have confidence. You know what you can do with your hands. It sounds like obviously you've been working on the ground game even more as well. Um, sometimes in the past, there's been a tendency that your emotions can both show us great showmanship in the octagon, but also, you know, have got the better of you a little bit. You talked about the psychological work that you've done as well. What does that look like? And, and is the plan against Asen Sao, who's not an emotional guy in himself, he's not going to really rile you up. Is the plan to sort of taper that a little bit? Um, you know, I have a nice game plan, you know, just do, be myself in there, you know, just be myself and have fun, you know, you know, mix things up, become the martial artist that I know that I am, that I know I've been working on. Um, so just about having fun, man, I'm excited. I mean, this whole week, even getting here, it's just felt great to be here to fight week, you know, getting the Reebok here, the smallest things, checking in, getting picked up from the airport, like the small things you take for granted, I think um, you lose sight of those sometimes. Um, excited to go through this journey of fight week and have those feels again you know get goosebumps thinking about it you know your heart races when you think about the fight and I think that's a difference you know mentally physically emotionally I'm invested in this um in this sport again you know if you want to call fighting a sport but I'm, uh, I'm all in you know I felt like after I won the title I I didn't set goals after obviously I had injuries I was a little worried about staying healthy and getting healthy so I didn't I wasn't able to visualize um, what my next plans were, what my next goals were, and that's what I've done my whole entire life was 
visualization, you know, manifest my, my future. And all I could really focus on was staying healthy, getting healthy, rehabbing through my injuries. And now I was able to have that time to really reflect and just train and get back to the grind, you know. Hard work pays off, you know, that's as, that's as simple as that, hard work pays off. And all, all of this will obviously be targeted towards half hour stand. So what challenge does he bring to the table, to the cage, if you like? I mean, I have, I have a lot of respect for Asun Sal. He's been, you know, there's not many WC guys left around. And, you know, those guys have spot, and, you know, been in the top five, you know, for quite some time now. Um, you know, he, he doesn't bring the most exciting fights. He's kind of a counter striker. So, you know, just for me, it's just, you know, my game plan is just to stay busy, do more than him, and, uh, you know, push the pace on him and, and make him fight. I'm looking forward to seeing this this new revived and energized version of you in there. So best of luck. Thanks, Carolyn. And we will take our next questions from Nolan King with USA Today. Appreciate the time today, man. Uh, just kind of going off of uh, you know what was just asked of you. you. You talked about the mental side of things and the physical adjustments. When you go back and you look at the three losses that you had and, and the changes that you've made, what do you think the biggest adjustment you've had to make coming into this fight is? hard work, work, work in, you know, believe that, just didn't go in and, you know, clock in. I went in for a purpose to get better each day, to push myself to the limit. I always train hard, I always do that, but, uh, you know, really investing in myself, becoming a better martial artist. I mean, I traveled 3,000 miles across the country, left my family, left like, the comforts of my home, he, the, he my comfort zone to get out of it. That's what I really need, game, I knew, you know, new guys, you know, that are hungry to, you know, to, to challenge me to, to be battle tested, come back to Sacramento in between camps. Um, and the same guys, you know, are, are still battle testing me. And you know, so just getting ready for war, you know, getting ready for that battle and just putting yourself in those um, those tough situations, getting out of your comfort zone and just putting the work in. That's uh, that's really what's different, you know. Um, no excuses, no, no injuries. Um, no mental setbacks, you know, no emotional setbacks. Just really try to find peace in my life. You know, my family brings that to me. And knowing when I was away from them, what I was sacrificing, um, what I was missing out on, you know, um, just all going to contribute to my success on Saturday night. And you've talked in the past about uh, potentially moving down to flyweight. Is that still on your plate after this one? Uh, we'll see, man. We'll see how the bandweight shakes up. You know, I want to be the best in the world. And that's what I set out to do. You know, if, if it's in my cards to go down to 25 and become the flyweight champion as well as the bantamweight champion, then uh, we'll do that. I'll talk to my coaches and, and managers. But, you know, first and foremost, I have a you know, tough adversary in Rafael Sunsal this Saturday I'm focused on. Um, you know, but you always try to have your second move ready to go. But, uh, you know, it, it's getting it's getting back to the throne. That's, that's what I want. I want the, the bantamweight title uh, back. You know, I'm uh, very excited for that um, opportunity to – uh, climb the ranks again, you know. Once a hunter, always a hunter. What do you think the uh, the game, like the 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 map to that title shot is? Do you feel like with just a couple more wins here, given your name, given that you're a former champion, you could be right back in that mix. You could be the one fighting for the title. Just go out there, be myself. You know, go out there and fight the way that I fight. You know, put on performances. You know, charge people. You know, first, second, third, fourth, whatever round I have to do it in. You know, just cool, calm, and collected. Um, just really show my growth, you know. I, I look at it as like a lot of people look at a loss and failure or setback as, you know, not no progress, you know, or no but for me it was like I've learned I've had to learn the hard way my whole entire life and I feel like I won the title at twenty five, you know, I was twenty five years old and eleven year world champion. I I lost it early and I feel like I'm still, you know, I made my prime at twenty eight years old. Um, it feels Every day I'm getting better as a martial artist, um, as a human, as a, as a man. Um, so I, I just feel like my, better, my best days are ahead of me. And uh, just knowing that life's a marathon, I'm not a sprint. You know, so whatever it takes to get back to um, title shot, to become a world champion, I'm mentally, physically, emotionally prepared um, to do whatever it needs to be done. Good luck Saturday, Cody. Appreciate the time, man. And we will take our next set of questions from Mike Heck with MMA Fighting. 
Hey, Cody, as you know, in the sport, especially hindsight is a, is a fickle beast. And you got, you sort of alluded to, you got pushed pretty quickly, became a champion in just four years as a pro after just 11 fights. If you could do things differently and get yourself out of your comfort zone, like you talked about and learn these lessons a little earlier on, would you do it? Or is this an important part of your story and your journey? Yeah, this is, I would never change anything in my life. I feel like, uh, Whatever stage you're in, whatever you're going through, you're going to grow through. I truly believe that the Lord puts you in places in your life for learning experiences, setbacks, success. Like, are you prepared for the success that's going to come with the win? Are you prepared what's going to have to be done with a loss? You know, and I've, I've you know, battled my demons. I've, I've faced myself. I've faced my, you know, insecurities, my, my you know, my, you know, setbacks, and, and really studied those and really like, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it's on me to turn this around. It's on any coach, any teammate, it's on myself. And uh, just being real with yourself and true with yourself of what needs to be done. And that's just putting the hard work in, you know, grinding completely in, in, in every facet of every martial arts um, discipline you need to do. You need to work on this, you need to work on that. And just becoming a better martial artist is uh, what has really changed my eyes. You know, going to Jersey is really been a, a blessing for me. Um, I'm, I hate change. A change in my life is um, I always was like, you know, my mom would I come home from school, my mom would move the furniture around, and I would really get physically sick because I, I it would change. So sometimes, you know, I think that we look at change as a negative uh, negative reflection in our life, but uh, some change is cool. This has been a good change, you know, uh, a little bit of sanity. And you go in there and do the same you know, kind of game plan, the same. Um, yeah, approach to fighting like a half and that's the same the same so um, just you know really just soul searching and just talk with myself you know you know it's me versus me always it's never my adversary or my opponent I mean it's always if I can battle myself if I can you know defeat myself then I, I, I'm gonna go and be victorious against any opponent because whatever I do I'm the harshest critic of myself and, um, you know I'm the correction to, being real with myself, you know, no excuses, no nothing. I wouldn't change anything, man. Like, you know, I don't see anyone else that was uh, brought up. You know, not too many people was brought up like I was, especially in the fight game. I fought everybody. I fought the top contenders. I was a Judy knockout artist. You know, eight nos, twenty one nos. I made it. Starts them. Everybody they put in front of me, knocked them out. You know, couldn't beat Dominic Cruz. Um, you know, master class performance against them. And you know. I mean, once I obtained that goal, like I said, of being a world champion, I dreamed about it since I was a teenager. I obtained that goal. I got injured shortly after. I couldn't manifest or visualize myself inside the octagon or sitting in the title because I was so focused on staying healthy. I had a back injury. I tore my back. I had an annual tear and went to Germany. I did trim cells. I did everything I could besides going to the knife to get surgery. And that took a long time to rehab, rehab, you know, any sport. The athlete knows it's you know the physicality of it is, is intense, but the emotional, uh, mental side of it is like, hey, can I push this without it doing it again? So kind of was like held back a little bit in my training, so I wasn't super prepared. But I just got back to that like you know that physical grind. You know what I mean? <laughs> the physical grind, man. I ended up landing myself in the hospital for weeks because I had a you know a kidney infection, I was training too hard. Um, but you know I got out of the hospital, and was right back to work and. You know, that's, that's it, man. You're gonna have, you have to go through those things. You're gonna be faced with so many different things in this sport, ups and downs, highs and lows. And I feel like life goes in the same way. You just gotta find that balanced life, fighting your career, and, and balance it all. And I feel like I've done a great, great job um, as a lady in the last year, I would say. Really balanced the, the father and husband, the, the fight, the fighting, being able to turn it off and off. Um, the switch when you know it's, it's go times where I'm kind of focused fully in camp and just really uh, you know working through everything that you know life throws at me. Has this all provided some valuable lessons for you to pass on to your son as well? To know that sometimes life's going to throw you some curveballs, but it's how you react to them, how you bounce back from them, and move forward that defines who you are as a person. Yeah, definitely. You know, I have eyes on me. My son looks up to me. He watches everything I, every single thing I do. I'll shadow box in the house, and I'll, I'll see Kai shadow box, and I'll, you know, just doing this. Me and my wife trip out all the time because he just listens to us. He just absorbs everything that we do and say and how we act. So I want to be a good example for him. You know what I mean? Like, completely be like 
someone I want him to be proud of. Cody's my father, and that's that's my father. You know what I mean? That's something that at the end of the day, whether how many, how many titles I have or defend or how many fights I win, you know, knows that I I I got it. You know what I mean? And that's 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 my father. That's that's my father. You know what I mean? Like that's my father. You know what I mean? Like that's my father. You know what I mean? Like that's my father. You know what I mean? Like that's my father. You know what I mean? Like that's my father. You know what I mean? Like that's my father. You know what I mean? Like that's my father. You know what I mean? Like that's my father. Getting up and fighting, fighting for a better life for him, just to show him. I hate that. Sometimes life doesn't go as you plan. You gotta go you know, with the punches and keep going. So that's for everybody. That's for everybody in life. I hope it. I can inspire a lot of people to like not give up for going through hard times. Or you know, what I mean, I was on top of the world. I mean, I was a world champion, young, had everything, had the world at my fingertips. You know, and I'm on a three fight skid, but it never, you know, deterred me from. What I what I feel like I am, I'm the best man away in the world, and I get to showcase that um, again June 6 with the refound love uh, of the sport, passion, fire burning. Just this one's for my soul. This is what I need. You know, as much as I try to have that hatred for fighting, I'm always pulled back into it because I need fighting more than fighting needs me. And at the end of the day, that's my purpose, and this is how I'm going to um, hopefully help a lot of people get inspired and motivated. And, and my son is looking at me. Watching my every move to just remember that everything happens for a reason. No matter where you're at in life, you gotta just keep you know keep your head down, your head up, and keep uh, chugging along. So the hunger is clearly there. The desire to compete is certainly there. But I've talked to you a few times over the years. I have to say, outside of the quarantine beard, there you are about as relaxed as I've ever seen you heading into a fight. Is this the most relaxed you've been? Yeah, I get goosebumps thinking about it, man. Like I don't know, I just. I think that I've done everything in my power. I left no uh, no uh, stone unturned at this camp, you know. I literally been training so hard, you know. Right after Christmas, I went to New Jersey, trained for Jersey, and obviously had a kidney infection. Right after I got out of the hospital, I went and searched for the best kidney specialists to make sure my kidneys were okay. And, um, you know, I just got back to work. You know, I just I didn't want to let it all go to waste, you know, no matter what I was going through. Just grinding through all the bullshit. You know, there's a lot of bullshit that life throws at you. You just gotta grind through that stuff. And um, as simple as, as that, I know I said it in the, the past interview or the past question, is like, hard work pays off. You just always gotta remember, hard work will always pay off. You can be the most talented, the most gifted, the most, the fastest, the strongest, whatever. And if you're not working hard, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get the results you want. And that's all you have to do is grind. Nobody cares about your excuses. Nobody cares about what happened yesterday, today. You know what you have going on next week. It's about what's going on. Or did you put in enough work for this camp? Did you put in enough time to go in there? If Rafael's going to give me my best pace, he's going to be able to withstand everything that I am. Am I able to do enough for him to win this fight? And I just know that I've done that. I know that I can go in there and put him in deep waters and drown his ass.